Let's get started with news you can use for today, March 17th, 2022. Um, three things I want to talk to you about. Yesterday, the Fed, for the first time since 2018, raised their interest rates from 0.25 to 0.50, a quarter point. You wouldn't think that's much. That's a doubling of interest that's charged. Now, they don't just take that quarter point and tack it on to whatever they were charging for credit cards and home loans and things like that. Actually, as of yesterday, oh, before I say this, um, the Fed indicated yesterday there will be six more price increases this year, interest rate increases this year, and there'll be three or four is what they're anticipating for next year. Now that is probably double what the, the market talk was up to now. They were thinking maybe five or six increases total. This is looking like 10. Um, and I think they see the writing on the wall that the only way to get this stagflation or inflationary curve under control is by hammering down on the interest rates. The problem is when you hammer down on the interest rates, one rate will be too much and we'll shut down the economy. We'll go into free fall recession, especially if they take the wind out of the sails of the housing market, which I will argue has already happened. Um, Yesterday, 30 year, the average 30 year interest rates, you, you're not going to believe this. This is way beyond even what I was predicting was 4.875, almost 5% interest. Uh, eight months ago, 2.61. We've almost doubled our interest rate. That is just flat shutting down the housing industry. Now, you hear people still talk about, you know, our industry is so hot here and this and that. And I would argue, go out, drive the streets, go talk to some of the real estate agents who are very active or have been active, and you will find that is not the case. Um, I have a friend that sold a house that was in the process of selling her mother's house, a mid-century house in Costa Mesa, which is just outside of Newport Beach. And um, they initially priced this particular property at 1.375 million. Uh, there was all the evidence that it would have sold for that. In fact, there's one pending for, I think, 1.395 million. Similar house, mid-century house type thing. But after three weeks, they had basically no offers. Um, and they have dropped it. I'd suggested dropping $100,000 in the price to try and restart the bidding war. And they dropped it about 100 and they dropped it down to like 1450, or even more than I suggested, 130. Um, and I will let you know how that goes. But uh, that is what we're seeing all over the place. Um, we're, we're seeing the fact that these interest rates, and by the way, a uh, $1.3 million home in that part of California in Orange County, that's a starter home. That would be a first time home buyer home, believe it or not. But the first time home buyers are very sensitive to the rate increases. So when you've got a rate increase from 2.61 to 4.3, eight, seven, four, five, four point nine, five percent interest. That's a horrendous bump and can be hardly afforded by anybody. And so, you know, an interest rate or a mortgage payment of maybe 2,500 will have gone to close to $5,000. That will flat shut down that level of activity in my opinion. All right, that's uh, interest rate and interest. We've also going to talk a little bit about the California um, goofiness and how this will affect other states. We talked earlier, I think last year, about this new rule that was going into effect in January. It's in effect now. At the auction block, when uh, people will buy a house, uh, there is a, uh, let's say you buy a house at the auction for $500,000. There's a 45-day cooling off period the minute you, you, you pay for that house, where you can't do anything with that house because the state of California including any municipalities, cities, counties, and a lot of other quasi-government things, and their, the people who work for them have a right of first refusal to bid more than that price that you bid. In other words, you could put out 500000 45 days from now, they could give you $500,001 for doing that. So you can do nothing with that. And this, this is ridiculous. When you see how this thing is being practiced, I mean, this even goes down to the regions of the University of California system. These are the, the 26 governing members. They themselves can go out, if they wanna buy a house, they can take away your auction win 
and offer a dollar over a penny over whatever the rules are and they can take that house away from you. This is like government gone crazy. You will see this in some other states. It's gonna happen. Um, also, the rule that one of the rules that kicked in is if you don't maintain the house after you bought it at auction, um, you can be fined up to, I think it was $5,000 a day. And the maintenance is not just what you'd think about. The house is falling down, dilapidated, the yard's overgrown. It gets down as specific as if you have a mosquito issue or if a state employee was to go by to check on a house and they got bit by a mosquito, that could be a $5,000 fine. You've not maintained the house for that purpose. So that is crazy. Uh, now, on top of that, and that went into effect, I think it was January 1. So that's that's in effect now. It's killed, the my understanding, it's killed the auction market out there. Nobody wants to waste time and put $500,000 in a trustee's account uh, because in California, you have to buy for cash on the day you buy. You can't say, I'll buy it and then I'll get you a loan within 30 days. You have to literally bring cash, cash uh, to the marketplace and you have to be able to provide either cashier's check, certified cashier's checks or cash, cash. Most of the time it's cash, cash. That's how the mob is laundering money. Uh, it's cash, cash, and you won't get your hands back on it till 45 days later or you won't get your hands on the house till 45 days later. So it's crazy. So we've got something new that they just proposed. And this, I think you're gonna see this in probably the next five years in most states in the country. This is um, stupid, but brilliant on the part of the state of California. Uh, they want to try and reduce these going out of control price increases. I think they're hitting the wrong end of the bear, but what they're proposing, it's not law yet, but I think it will be shortly is that any house that is sold within three years of buying it will have a 25% penalty tax added to or taken away from the profit uh, that is generated from that sale. So it's initially done to, um, to, to take a lot of the profit from the wholesalers and from the rehabbers, but the, this is the law of unintended consequences. Anybody who buys a house, it applies to. So let's say that you bought a house and you're a high flyer, you know, in AstraZeneca. And all of a sudden, two years later, they want to move you from California to Wisconsin. You have to sell your house. You're going to have to pay 25% of that gain as a penalty to the state of California. And um, that is one way to shut down for sure a wholesale market. And in a lot of cases, a rehab market. So what's going to happen? No one's going to want to rehab here because why would you do that and immediately have to pay 25% of your profit as a penalty to the state of California? Uh, they have the right to increase that number. Um, and I don't know if they'll do that, but it will literally make houses sit on the market unrehabbed. And it will also drive prices down pretty dramatically. This is the brilliant part of the thing because the rehabbers who, my buddies who still do this stuff here, they're not gonna pay you know, they would normally pay 350 for a house that needs 50 work that would sell for 500. Um, and now they're gonna be, they're gonna pick up on the other side from the seller that difference. And so these guys will hold the line and they'll be driving that market down for that unrehabbed house from 350 to probably 250 to cover that profit hit that's gonna come to them from the state of California. So that will drive down prices. Um, but it is a disaster the way that it is written. I don't know if it'll make it all the way through, but I suspect it will. And you can expect this type of activity in other states that have not yet regulated things like wholesaling, because this is an easy way to regulate wholesaling. You just take the monetary incentive out of it. So that is it for news you can use today. Sorry on St. Patrick's Day to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, you get it live as it comes in. And uh, that's what's happened here in the last 24 hours. So lots of stuff to chew on. As always, we will keep you guys up to date. All right.